In this short video, we're going to review some techniques we can use for solving exponential and log equations. So let's start with exponential equations. If we can write it in a way that we have two powers equal to each other, which have the same base, then all we need to do is set the exponents equal to each other and solve. And that's just a property of a one-to-one -one function. So here's an example. Let's solve 16 to the power of x over 1024 equals 32 raised to the power of x plus 1. Now, I don't have powers with the same base. This isn't even written as a power on the left-hand side. And the base over here is 32. The only power I see here has base 16. So the way it's written, I can't use this property, but I can rewrite everything in this equation as a power of 2. 16 is 2 to the power of 4. So I'd have 2 to the power of 4 raised to the power of x. 1024 is 2 to the power of 10. And then 32 is 2 to the power of 5. So now I can use properties of exponents. I can write this as 2 to the power of 4x over 2 to the power of 10 equals 2 to the power of 5 in parentheses x plus 1. Now, dividing these powers is the same as subtracting the exponents. So I would have 2 to the power of 4x minus 10 equals 2 to the power of 5x plus 5. And I just use the distributive property up here to distribute the 5 across the x and the 1. So now I have what I was looking for. I have two powers with the same base. They're equal to each other, so their exponents must be equal to each other. So let me just make sure I, I solve this linear equation correctly. I'll go ahead and subtract 4x from each side, and then I'll go ahead and subtract 5 from each side, and that gives me x equals negative 15. All right, another case is suppose you have different bases. You actually have a lot of options in this particular case um, of how to solve these. I'm going to show you one method. Uh, certainly, you could use the change of base formula to write them as uh, having the same um, base and then use the previous method. And there may be other things we could do as well. But what we're going to do is take the log of both sides, log base b, and then solve the resulting equation. So for example, if I have 5 raised to the power of 2m minus 3 equals 2 raised to the power of m plus 1, and we're asked to find an exact answer and an approximation which is correct to four decimal places. So I have different bases here, and I can't easily write 5 as a power of 2, for example. So what I can do is take the log, and you can use any base you want. You can choose any value for b, but because I want a decimal approximation, I would either use log, so log base 10, or the natural log, log base e. So when I do this, then I can bring these exponents out in front as multipliers. Now, natural log of 5 is just a number. Natural log of 2 is just a number. So I can go ahead and use the distributive property on each side of the equation. And then I'll do some algebra to make sure I have all of the terms that have a variable m on one side of the equation, and I'll collect everything that's just a constant on the other side of the equation. So I'll have 2 natural log of 5 times m minus natural log of 2 times n equals natural log of 2 plus 3 natural log of 5. So I can factor out the m and then divide both sides by the coefficient of m. So now I have an exact value. 
right here. Here's an exact answer written kind of complicated way. If I want to put this into my calculator, there is a lot of room for error. There's a lot of approximations I need to make. So what I could do is use the property of logs to uh, still get another exact answer, but which is easier to evaluate on the calculator. So for example, when I have these multipliers out in front, I'm going to bring those inside as exponents. And so um, 5 cubed is 125, 5 squared is 25. And now I have a sum of two logs. I could write that as the product, so 2 times 125. And then here I have the uh, difference of logs. So I could write then that as a single log with the quotient of the inputs. So now I'm down to something a little bit easier to deal with. Natural log of 250 over the natural log of 12.5. I'm less likely to make a mistake with my calculator when I only have one log divided by one log. And my decimal approximation then is about 2.1861. Finally, another special case would be if the equation is just a, an exponential equaling a constant. In that case, all we have to do is uh, rewrite the equation in the exponential, I'm sorry, in the log form, and then solve for x. So for example, if I have 400 equals 900 e to the negative 5t, and I'm going to try to find the value of t, exactly in a four decimal place approximation. So I don't quite have it equal a constant yet. I want to get the exponential part by itself equaling a constant. So the first thing that I'd like to do is go ahead and divide both sides by 900 to get the exponential part by itself. Now 400 over 900 simplifies to 4 ninths. So now let's change this into the equivalent log form. It's going to be a natural log. So it'll be the natural log of 4 ninths. And it will equal negative 5 two, 5 t. And now to solve for t, I would just need to divide both sides by negative 5. Now we had a nice property of logs that says that taking the reciprocal of the input changes the sign of the output. So I'm going to do that um, in a minute to help get the decimal approximation. This is a fine answer. Like I said, it's a little bit cleaner without the minus sign. And so if I want to re remove the minus sign, I need to take the reciprocal of the input to the log. Uh, then I can go ahead and pull out my calculator and get a decimal approximation. That's about 0 0.1622. Let's look at log equations. So if I can rewrite my equation, or if I'm given an equation where it is log base b of some function equals log base b of g. Now it's important that you have a single log. There's no multiplier out in front here. It's just the log base b of f of x equals log base b of g of x. In that case, then, because the log is a one-to-one -one function, then that would mean that uh, and we have to have the same base on each side then we can just say f of x equals g of x and solve that. Now, as a general warning, no matter what technique we're using when we're solving a log equation, we have to verify that each solution is the in the domain of the original equation. Remember that the input to a log function can only be a positive number. It cannot be zero, it cannot be a negative number. So let's look at an example. Now here I don't have the form that I'm talking about up here. 
So I'm going to have to use the properties of logs to write the left-hand side as a single log. And I can just take the product then of the input. So that would be log base 2 of the product x minus 1 times x minus 5. And that'll equal log base 2 of 3x plus 5. So now I have an equation. Each side is a single log. No multiplier, only a single term. So the inputs have to be equal to each other. And just as a reminder, to solve this, I need to first multiply this out, collect all the like terms on one side to make the other side 0, and then use some technique to solve it when it equals 0. In this case, factoring is quite easy. However, of my two solutions, x equals 0, Going back to the original equation, if I put x equals 0 into log base 2 of x minus 1, I would get the log of negative 1. That is not defined, so 0 is not in the domain of that equation. So that's rejected. But what about x equals 9? Well, certainly it's in the domain, so that should be good. And let's just do the extra work to check it. Now let's check x equals 9. If I take log base 2 of 8 and add it to log base 2 of 4, will I get log base 2 of 32? Well, 2 raised to what power is 8? That's 3. 2 raised to the power of 2 is 4, so I have 3 plus 2. Over here, 2 raised to what power is 32? 2 to the power of 5 equals 32. So I'll get 3 plus 2 equals 5. So sure enough, x equals 9. Not only is it in the domain, it is indeed a solution to the original equation. Let's look at a different technique. Suppose that I have a log function equaling a constant, and I'd like to solve for the variables which are in the input to the log. Well, I just uh, rewrite this as an equivalent, and I spelled that wrong, equivalent, equivalent, no, equivalent, so an equivalent exponential equation, and then solve from there. And as always, I've got to check to make sure that whatever solution I get is in the domain of the original equation. So let's solve, as an example, the natural log of x minus the natural log of x minus 1 equals 2. And we're just going to find an exact answer. No decimal approximation. So what I'll do is I'll, in order to use this technique, I need to have just a single log function. No multiplier out in front only one term. So I can combine these into a single log term. And uh, because I have the subtraction of two logs, I can write that as a single log where I take the quotient of the inputs. And the equivalent exponential form then would be x over x minus 1 equals e squared. And now I just have to solve this for x. So I'll multiply both sides by x minus 1, distribute the e squared, collect all the terms on one side that have an x. So I'll go ahead and subtract the x from each side, add e squared to each side, factor out the x, and divide by this coefficient e squared minus 1. So x equals e squared all over e squared minus 1. And that's my exact answer. Now, as a last case, uh, suppose that I have a different basis here. Uh, in this case, I'm a little bit uh, uh, intrigued or in, and maybe fortunate because even though these are different bases, um, one base is a power of the other. So 8 is 2 to the power of 3. So what I'm going to do to approach this is use the change of base formula to rewrite this 
right hand side as having log base 2. Now I still have this log base 2 of 8 in the denominator to deal with. I can't use any technique that I've discussed so far the way this is written. But I said I was fortunate, and even it doesn't really matter. I mean, log base 2 of any uh, number here would still just be a number. So I could still use this technique. It's just a lot cleaner when I'm dealing with an, a nice whole number. Log base 2 of 8 is 3. So now I can multiply both sides by 3. Still not quite ready to use my technique yet because I have a multiplier of 3 here. But this multiplier I can bring inside the equation or inside the log expression as an exponent. Now I have log base 2 of x cubed equals log base 2 of, well, x cubed plus x minus 5. So a single log equaling another single log. Now I have the same base. No multipliers out in front. So that means that their inputs have to be equal to each other. And so the x cubed is going to add out, and that tells me that the solution is x equals 5. should go back and make a check here. x equals 5 is indeed in the domain of the original equation. So that solution is acceptable. All right, so we'll be using these uh, log equations and exponential equations certainly throughout the rest of the chapter, and possibly in other cases throughout the course.